Alrighty. I am back, sorry. Uh, sorry for the delay. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my blanket and myself situated here. There we go. Alright. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Banshee Cup qualifier number one. My name is Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we have Three-Legged Cat. On the right, it is Ross Pierre Dahl. And this is going to be our upper bracket, our second upper bracket semifinal. Winner of this goes to the upper bracket final, which will be up next. That'll be our last best of three of the day. Tomorrow, we'll be having uh, four best of threes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that'll be from the lower bracket. So this will be the format of the tournament for the next six weekends. It's going to be Saturdays will be upper bracket, Sundays will be lower bracket, and grand finals. So... With Battlefield of Eternity as map number one, all 90 heroes are up and available. This does use this tournament does use the Meta Madness style of draft, so heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps. There are no baseline bans in the tournament, so no pre-bans, so all heroes are available. Of course, there's bans at the top of the screen, but those don't add to the banned away heroes. Only heroes, as I said, that are picked and played. So Li Ming will be unavailable for future maps in this best three. And as we get to our upper bracket finals after this best of three that list will reset once again hopefully that was a nice explanation for all of you of how the meta madness style of draft works but we're here banshee cup qualifier number one second upper bracket semi-final and we've got battlefield of attorney for map one we've got a vala hogger hanzo genji band away Li ming blaze and chromie up in a or will be picked up lucio has not been banned out will this be a lucio snap because i would not i like i wouldn't well, Brightwing is up and available, too. I was going to say... I kind of hate that skin. I was going to say, Lucio is just such a good hero, hero for, for just about any single... A, any map, but uh, Brightwing, percent-based healing, blink heals, AoE, cleanse. Not bad. Not bad to have. Uh, ban phase, let's see. Diablo Li Ming, maybe get rid of a solo laner you don't want to deal with. Or just get rid of a hammer. Or just get rid of the hammer and not deal with her. Not a bad idea. Alrighty. Oh, this tea could steep a little bit faster. Luckily, I've got some water. I still don't understand, but I'm mainly here for you and to learn. Well, Logan, thank you for that kindness. Do you have any questions? Could I clarify it any better? By all means, ask away. I'm always happy to clarify so that everyone can enjoy the stream. Always happy to clarify because um, when it comes to these drafts, it's kind of hard to do draft analysis because there's so many different ways you could approach these drafts. You could you could play game number one to limit the better heroes in future maps, or you could just try and play the game, play the series quickly and end it in two maps. So you'd have to go to that third map where you have more bands, uh, more heroes banned away. Blaze, Chromie. I actually really like the draft from Ross Pierdol. Uh, Ross Pierdol is a Polish team, right? Yeah, Polish team. And then Three-Legged Cat is a Menagerie. There's, looks like that's Spain, Germany, Sweden. I think that's, uh, that's Netherlands. And that is Ser Serbia. Okay, I don't, I don't know that flag. Luckily, Wikipedia can tell me. Tracer Chen will round out the draft, and that's kind of terrifying from Three-Legged Cat. Kind of scary. Good sustained damage, good burst, reset potentials high with Li Ming. Last pick for the right-hand side, gonna need a race hero, or you need a hero that can win the team fight, then you just go race at your own leisure. Leisure? Leisure? Leisure. Um, ba, 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 ba. Ooh, that's exciting. You only heard the end, but I don't play drafts, so I like learning how others run heroes in different regions. is fascinating to me. Oh, okay. It's essentially, it's, it's, this tournament series draft style utilizes a, um, uh, technique? I don't know, that's not right term for it but this tournament series when a hero is picked and played they're unavailable for future maps in the series so these 10 heroes that you see on the screen none of the like so in map number two there's no Rhaegar there's no Rhaegar Rhaegar, Zul'jin, Blaze all these heroes you're seeing in map number one are unavailable for map number two 
But when we get into our next best of three, the upper bracket finals, so after this, we'll go to one more best of three, and the hero list resets. All right, start prediction. Which team wins Battlefield of Eternity? Uh, I'm going to copy these names really fast. Give me a second to get the prediction written up. I kind of should have done this, but I was rambling about other stuff. All right, that's all good. Let's go ahead and show you the level ones. We'll introduce the teams, and once we do that, we will check out our bets. All right, so we've got White playing Blaze. A uh, Ziomek will be your Rhaegar. Bronek is the Chromie. Bal Barlor is your Zul'jin, and Mac will be a Garrosh. To the left-hand side, the west-hand side, we got three-legged cat. BRB soaking on Chen. We'll see a Captain Rex Lee Ming, Deviant Brightwing, Dark on Tracer, and High Wraith will be the Diablo. Zul'jin is Reckless, level one. We've got, uh, once again, the first time. What a, what a name. Once again, the first time for Chromie. Warbreaker on the Garrosh. Precious Ingredients, Chen. Diablo has Soul Shield. That's the new icon, if you missed out on that. It was updated a while ago, but it, it still catches me off guard all the time. Like, whoa! Okay, it's not that big of a deal. There was a toss. There was a combo. Way good groundbreaker, but the phase shift from Brightwing comes through in time, and she'll actually tank a few shots from Chromie. All right, let's take a look at our Twitch prediction. Start prediction, which team is going to be winning this map? I realize that my display capture is still on in the scene. Whoopsie poopsie. Sorry about that. Toss on to Diablo. He's looking to back away. Gets a fire stomp through the enemies. No, no level four, so no soul to flame for him. You're thinking about Zul'jin. Uh, unavailable to ev everyone. Yes, unavailable to everyone. So, yeah, so so Zul'jin can't be picked up by the side of Three-Legged Cat in the next map. These ten heroes are banned away. These ten heroes are banned away. That is a good question. How you doing today, Cranky? Good to see you. Zul'jin, six stacks already. On his You Want Axe, not too bad. Blaze, Rhaegar in the top lane up against Tracer Chen. Will they be able to steal this away? Phase shift from Brightwing is going to bolster the health of Chen as he flying kicks in. Polymorph onto Blaze. He's turned into a crab right there. The body blocks are really good. Blaze trying to get away. Xiomech doing their best to, to get some heals out, but that will be Chen or Blaze going down. First blood over to the side. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Chet. Why didn't he just go this way? Like, I know the enemies were right here, but couldn't have Rhaegar just, like, run along this wall and thrown out heals and thrown down totems and stuff? I feel like Blaze was like, I'm going this way, and that's the only direction I'm going. <laughs> or was he just dead either way? He might have been dead. He honestly might have just been dead either way, and it doesn't matter, but I am curious why he was so gun-ho about making their way through down this way into the, into the lane. All right. Camp grab for top and bottom. Fallen shamans to both sides. First objective phase is here. First objective phase of this map is also standardized. First and, uh, well, I guess the, yeah, the first and second phase of this first objective. God, that is some weird phrasing. Shadow charge, a bit of damage onto Garrosh, but that means his trait's gonna activate or at least give him some more shielding or armor. Gets like a little combo onto Tracer. Takes a pulse bomb. Does nearly no damage to him. Zul'jin trying to throw in some axes. Donating some here and there. A little bit low. Mac is doing their best to back away. Chen flying kicks in. It's going to be tossed away. Combo from Li Ming doesn't get the reset. And I can't believe it. Garrosh made it out with a sliver of HP. Diablo does chase down the Zul'jin. And Garrosh will, or, yeah, Garrosh will be able to hearth out. Hey, what's up, Wildfire? Good to see you, bud. Sorry, I wasn't on the past couple days. My laptop died and I had to get a new one. Oh, well, you don't have to apologize. Attendance isn't mandatory. Unless you're my mod. Unless you're my mods. Then then attendance is mandatory. 
but I don't take attendance, so you know it all works out. Uh, but yeah, no. Ho hopefully the new laptop's pretty cool. Never fun when you have to drop the money on something like that, but I hope it's uh, uh it was a nice upgrade or something. Rhaegar gets a bite on the butt. The face shift from Brightwing is in time. What? Minions OP OP. Minions are OP. Oh wow, we did not have a lot of gambling on this game. That's unfortunate. All right, regeneration globe stolen away. The objective phase does go over to the side of a three-legged cat. So how much value can they find in top lane with this immortal? Chen goes down to bottom. Ten talents here on the horizon for both. Zul'jin doing their best to just work through this immortal, and these axes are being donated quite fiercely. Garrosh looking to step in for a toss onto somebody. Has to pop the Indomitable. Diablo's the one that gets thrown. The immortal is going to be cleared out. Zul'jin and friends are looking to chase down the big bad Lord of Terror, but now Li Ming is maybe going to pop out. No, she's being chased down by Zul'jin. Diablo shoutout charges to one of the camp minions, and it seems like Li Ming can't find the reset she needs. Planning on a uh, new one this year anyway, but the old one's dying. I mean, I uh, couldn't copy my logins and such over. Oh, that's a pain in the booty. That is a pain in the butt. Yeah, I when you said died, I didn't realize like dead, dead died. Oh yeah, that that part is that part's a pain. It's, it's a little it's a little fun. Like you go through, you get all your stuff set up. But also, it's just time-consuming. Oh, Diablo might be... What? Chromie goes down. Diablo traded. Li Ming is going to be body blocked. Does she have a way out of this? I don't know. She has a short distance blink right there. Groundbreaker finished out by Garrosh. Zul'jin throws in another axe and gets the double kill. Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, oh, she's fine. No 10 talent, no guillotine. Let's actually take a look at the level, uh, excuse me, let's take a look at the other numbers right now as Garrosh has to pop the Indomitable, gets a self, he gets a, is it Blood Craze? I forget the name, Bloodthirst. It's a Bloodthirst attack and that will be a, uh, That'll be a Garrosh living. Unfortunately, in bottom lane, looks like Tracer Chen were able to dive onto Blaze and take him down. Wave of Force, Wandering Keg, Lightning Breath, Blink Heal, and I'm assuming it's Sticky Bomb for Tracer. Uh, on the opposing side, Ancestor Healing. Looks like Blaze... Is that Combustion? No, that's not Combustion. Uh, Warlord's Challenge. We'll also have the Temporal Loop. We already saw that in a fight before. And Zul'jin will be Tostitos. What's up, Turbo? How you doing today, bud? No bootable device, so I guess the SSD died. Oh, that's that's really oh, that's such a bummer right there. Because I was actually gonna I was gonna suggest I was like, oh, could you just rip out the SSD or something like that and put it in the new one? Chen will be taken down by Zul'jin. Tostitos is activated. Tracer cleared out as well. High Wraith is going to get tossed back into the enemies, and that will be a triple kill quite quickly to the side of Russ Pierdal. What alt does Chen go here? Uh, I was... Uh, I know I'm reading a message late. I was assuming it was Wandering Keg, but that's also because that's... I feel the, the flavor that BRB Soaking likes to go. I've casted uh, quite a few BRB soaking games, and, and I was assuming Keg because that's just what I've seen him take in the past. All right, objective phase goes to top lane, favoring Ross Pierdal. I think I have a moment I can throw out my teabag finally. There we go. Immortal starts pushing up into the top lane. Chen in bottom lane right now is just trying to work on this keep front gate. But let's go back into top as the Immortal is going to be really rapidly reduced here. Seems like Zul'jin might be able to... And yeah, they might have enough... Yeah, they have enough siege to take down the fort.
Temporal loop onto Diablo. He's Warlord challenged by Garrosh. Rhaegar jumps in for a bite on the butt. There's a big pulse bomb onto Rhaegar as well from Tracer. Lightning breath activated. Time stop from Chromie as Zul'jin continues to throw the axes in. A very low Diablo trying to back away. 35 stacks on Zul'jin. It is a combustion blaze, by the way. It is combustion. I wasn't wrong. I was like, no, that can't. I must be misreading the icon with the with the cooldown on it. No, it's a combustion blaze. Interesting. Fallen shaman, no hounds around. Those are already cleared out. 13 talent here on both sides. A little bit faster to the members of Ross Pyridel. Temporal loop on a tracer. Does she have recall in time? Chen rotated up here to try and help out. There's the combustion from Blaze. I can't believe it. Combustion Blaze, really? Oh, that's funny to me. That time trap was freaking huge. What's up, Alora? How you doing, bud? Happy Saturday to you. I know you're like the biggest NFL fan. I hope your uh, hope your 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 sports team does well this weekend. I know you're a huge NFL fan. I know you have to hide it on stream because you know, like it, it doesn't work with the whole like being on Twitch thing. Because <laughs> no one on Twitch likes sports. Diablo starts out this fight onto the Blaze. He answers right back with a jet propulsion of his own. Lightning Breath activated, and Diablo does go down. Zul'jin, 40 stacks currently. And Chen in top lane, just soaking things up. You love the sharks. How did you know? I'm. I've got ESPN. National Fish League. Speaking of fish, did you know? If you have Amazon Prime, you've got Prime Gaming. And if you've got Prime Gaming, you've got one free sub here at twitch.tv slash Bahama Gaming. Get yourself some ad free viewing. Get yourself some amazing emotes. Chen jumps in. Zul'jin trying to back away. Keeping those autos going. Oh, Zul'jin can't Tostito. Tostitos, if he's turned into a crab, the Ancestor Healing is going to be a little bit late. Combustion activated by Blaze. Temporal loop onto a few enemies. Chromie with the timeout right there, trying to sustain. No, the Ancestral Healing denied twice. Ancestral Healing denied twice. Youch. The only sports I like is E in front of them, namely fighting games and HOTS. I do love me some fighting games. Lions in the playoffs and Michigan won college. What year is this? It's 2024, homie. Don't worry, I got you. 20, it's 2024, I got you, homie. I too forget the year sometimes. It's like that Blink-182 song. What year is it? Diablo starts out on Rhaegar here and immediately gets the kill. Li Ming trying to find a second reset. Tostito activated by Zul'jin, but he's going to die either way. He's going to die either way, and it seems like Three-Legged Cat will be able to run it down here in this bottom lane. Finding the triple kill, maybe the quadra kill. Quadra kill achieved, and a lone Chromie to defend. 40 seconds, or 30 seconds on average, maybe a little bit less than that. But this is going to be bottom lane keep going down. They're playing to the far side of the keep. They want to go for core here. Three-Legged Cat wants to take map number one. But I don't think they're actually going to, now that I'm looking at it. Captain Rex is hard thing out for full. They're going to confirm the keep, and that's the end of that as they go and clear out the Immortal in bottom lane. Okay. Can we get Baja casting for EVO 2024? When is, when is EVO? I wanted to do fighting game casting this year. I wanted to try it out. Uh, there was a viewer that was in here, a bunch uh, named Preacher, or I think it's Street Preacher, and they were talking about how they do some fighting game stuff. So I wouldn't mind, uh, I need to look into it a little bit, but yeah. Fighting game commentary is something I wanted to try out this year. I'm sure there's like, there's a community discord somewhere that I could jump in and, and do some casting. I mean, if, if it exists for StarCraft, all I gotta do is just look. 
I mean, it exists for HOTS, it exists for StarCraft. There's actually a, um, you know that predecessor game that I raid into? I raid Lobber from time to time, and he plays a ton of that. There's a tournament for that going on right now, and I add it, I asked them on Twitter uh, if, if like, uh, rebroadcasting and stuff is allowed. It might be fun to try and cast a game that I don't know. Could be a little fun to check out the... The tournament series, sorry. July is the last weekend, I think. Oh, wow, it gives me tons of time. I just need what I see. This is all I need to do. I need to get, I need to get like slightly big in in fighting game casting, and then I just need to hit up Saint Cola, and then and then just be like, Yo, Saint Cola, help me out, dude. I like that is that is a bucket list to to to, to cast with Saint Cola. That dude is that dude is so much fun. If you've ever seen Saint Cola cast, he's such like he's like at a tournament. He's such a personality. He gets so into fighting games. Oh, Chen's gonna be getting into the Hall of Storms here. So they use they use the combustion as well to take him down. I mean, it's it's not that. That's an 80 second cooldown. It's actually kind of sizable. All right, so Li Ming is trying to poke in here. On the right, though, Zuljin just just rockets through that uh, objective health bar. And, uh, gotta say, what was looking like a decent late game for three-legged cats seems to be falling away. Shadow charge onto Garrosh. Jet propulsion in from Blaze. Sticky bomb applied to him. Diablo goes down. Souls expended. Chromie time stops to avoid the stun. And a very well-shielded Immortal goes into bottom. A really, really high shield on this Immortal. Ross Pierdol might be actually able to take map number one here. Uh, yeah, I was going to look and see. That's a lot of damage from the Immortal right now. Big Bad Belleth in the bottom lane with 24,200 points of health. How much shielding are you going to have? About, eh, just about 21, rounding up on that number. Still dealing 1,724 damage into structures. There is this push in bottom lane, so we'll see what's going to happen right here, right now. I feel like a team is about to win this map, but I'm not sure who. Could be the Winions. Zul'jin activates his Toss Dingo. Temporal loop onto the Bright Wing. Stuck in a loop level 20 was the pickup, and that does take her down. Wandering Keg is splitting the Zul'jin. He doesn't have the Tostingo active. It's 70 second cooldown, so trade right there. Jet Propulsion in from the Blaze. Core Shielding is starting to go down the right-hand side of the map. Chromie. Time stops. BRB soaking. Tries to drink through the pain. Rhaegar bites the butt. Catapults were cleared out. Immortal's already taking down some of the shielding. Can Ross Pierdal take map number one in this best of three in the upper bracket semifinal? As a reminder, winner of this series goes into the upper bracket final. Coming up next, time stop onto the Tracer. Jet Propulsion a little too early. Trace. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Li Ming is going to find a huge ball. If she can get a reset, this might be Reset City for Li Ming. Pop it off. Captain Rex, you monster. Captain Rex, you absolute monster. Captain Rex. God dang, Captain Rex. Red team's core is under attack. God dang. Um, things are looking a little awkward there, yeah. Zul'jin level 20 is the uh, forest medicine, right? This core ending is looking super awkward all of a sudden. Uh-oh, hold on, Zul'jin. Costingo activated. Lightning breath to answer. Finland. What's up, Broken? How you doing, bud? Garrosh and friends are respawning. Wandering Keg coming out from the Chen just to displace the enemy, and this should be enough damage onto the core. Three-legged cat with the most just, that was probably 
That was one of the best Lee Ming pop-offs I've seen in a while, man. Well done. I would love fighting game casting from you so much. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna try. Patty, if you know of any community discords for that kind of stuff, by all means, throw it my way. I would love any sort of uh, advice or tips or general direction. Nice, nice, Chen. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, which team wins Battlefield? It was Three-Legged Cat. They do win the map. You've lost every gamble today? <clears throat> do what I do. Go with the opposite of what you believe. Like, if you if you look at something, you're like, yeah, this team, this, this, this composition is going to win. Just do the opposite. Even if, even if, even, just, you got to go with the heart of the cards, man. To the Banshee Cup qualifier, upper bracket semifinal, three-legged cat versus Ross Pierre doll. We just saw three-legged cat pop off Captain Rex with probably one of the uh, one of the best Li Ming plays I've seen all year. One of the best Li Ming plays I've seen all year. Uh, but it, honestly, I haven't seen the Li Ming pop off like that in quite some time. So that was really, really cool to see and be a part of. Let's get into Tomb of the Spider Queen. Map number two in this best of three. Uh, the series, this tournament series does use the Meta Madness style of draft, so the heroes we just saw in the previous map cannot be drafted from either side. So just because Ross Pierdal played the Zul Jin does not mean Three-Legged Cat can pick up Zul Jin. Nobody can play him. He doesn't need to be banned either, so the bans at the top of the screen only pertain to the map draft. So if we do go to a map number three, and Stukov is not banned away, he could be drafted. But that's if we make it to a map three. That is if. Tomb of the Spider Queen, a very, very good Cho'Gall map. A very good map for stacking globes for Asmodan, but I don't think we're I don't think we're gonna be getting into that that realm. I don't think we're gonna be seeing that. I do know that BRB I think it's BRB Soaking has a really good Samuro. So we could see a Samuro pickup for this map. Abathur's not horrible in this map either. Could see Abathur Samuro if they want to just really lock in a win for Three-Legged Cat. Ban-wise, Junkrat, Hogger, Stukov, and Mephisto will be banned out. Okay. This is another good map for Alex Straza with Mephisto and Globes and stuff like that. But it's a snap... Excuse me. Snap pick onto the Jahana. She will be first picked for the side of Ross Pierdal. Not a bad hero for this map. Good for the double soak. Easy way to uh, easy way to group up the minions and get a quick clear. So we'll probably see some sort of mage with with this uh, Johanna. Think we'll get a Chogol. I would like a Chogol. I don't think we're gonna get one though. Hanzo, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, little, little, little frog in my throat this morning. Hanzo Anubarak. All right, I like that for three-legged cat. This is actually the first Hanzo of the day, if I'm not mistaken. Good mobility so far from Three-Legged Cat. Uh, with the Johanna, what a, ooh, first Lucio as well. Oh, that's a really, really, really good start for Ross Beardall. I, I actually really like their, their, their draft. They, they've checked a few boxes. I'd like to see a little bit more CC within their composition. All they really have right now is Lucio push off and Johanna Condemn, as well as Johanna's uh, Punish, not Subdue. She has the Punish for that little bit of slow. And uh, their wave clears are right. But same thing for Three-Legged Cat. They've got the double stun from Anubarak, and I'd like to see a little more CC in their composition as well. Sonya will be banned away for the solo lane. Okay. What are they thinking about picking up in the solo lane that could be dealt with by Sonya? Maybe they're considering a Rexar, and maybe they don't want to deal with uh, Misha getting beaten up a bit by Sonya. That could be the option. Rexar is actually really, really good for this map. There's a, there's a great tech or technique that people have used where you take flare at level one and you throw it into the bottom lane turn in you basically have vision of that rotation constantly and the reason i say constantly is because flare has an active cooldown so the moment you use the ability the cooldown starts and get this flare's cooldown is 20 second flare has an active time of 20 seconds so once flare expires you just throw another one we're not going to be seeing that whatsoever it's going to be a urel and a malfurion okay 
So with the Malfurion, I'd like to see some sort of mage to get the value out of Innervate. Probably, like, Kael'thas wouldn't be bad. Jaina actually is, uh, I believe Jaina's up and available. So Jaina could be a great grab with this composition as well. Are the heroes that are banned for the entire... Are they banned for the entire series or just one game? So, the, just this series... So when we get into the upper bracket final coming up next, Kerrigan, Leoric, Sylvanas, Lucio, Johanna, all, uh, uh, Zul'jin, all of those heroes are back and available. So the the uh, the rolling bands, if you if if you will, they only pertain to the current series you're in. So when we get into the upper bracket finals, all the heroes unlock again. I hope, I hope that answered your question. There's the Jaina that I was hoping for. That makes sense. Uh, Kerrigan, Leoric. I, I do like the aggression from Ralph Spiridol, but I think, honestly, Three-Legged Cat, just they, they check every box that I'd like. Good wave clear, good team fighting, scaling is really good, post level 10 is amazing, level 20 areas, <clears throat> fantastic as well. That's the case for picked heroes, but it's also a case for band. Oh, the band heroes at the top of the screen, those are only for the map draft. Only for the map draft. So those don't get added in. Only heroes that are picked and played. Only heroes that are picked and played. So it's it's uh, every map adds 10, not 16. Thank you for helping as well, chat. I appreciate the assistance, because we are on a delay, so reading and saying things is difficult, or delayed. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Alrighty, let's introduce our teams, let's take a look at the level 1s, and then we will start up our Twitch prediction on the left-hand side of the map. Up in this best of three series, we've got Three-Legged Cat, Captain Rex playing the Jaina, Deviant on your Malfurion, and B or B soaking to be your L, Dark on... The Anubarak, and last but not least, Hyraith will play the Hanzo. Good skinnergy right there. Pink Mount, slightly pink Hanzo. Nice skinnergy. Right-hand side of the map, we're looking at Ross Pyridol, trying to take us to a map number three. Uh, Bronek on Lucio, Mac to play the Johanna. Uh, Zyomek will be the Kerrigan. Balor, Barlor on Sylvanas. And White will be your Star Lord... Leor. Alright, Burrow, excuse me, the Impale thrown out. Lands one little CC. Big Revenging Wrath and Righteous Hammer. Lucio with the push off. Kerrigan trying to throw in a combo as well. The Ravage onto Dark. Nubrak throws back an Impale, but he will be going down. First blood over the side of Ross Pierdal. Kerrigan gets a Primal Grasp onto Beer Be Soaking, but does not find the pull for uh, for any sort of kill. All right, let's go ahead and start up our prediction. Which team is going to be winning? Tomb of the Spider Queen. Get your gambles in, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Hanzo, simple geometry, level one. Lingering chill for the Jaina. Nubrak is going into Nerubian armor. Dauntless for Yorel, Shield Glare on the Johanna, Fury of the Swarm on Kerrigan. Uh, Might of the Banshee Queen? Might of the Banshee Queen. I always think it's Withering Barrage, but Withering Barrage is like level 20 or something. Uh, Oasin's Renewal, and last but not least, Smooth Moves for Lucio. <clears throat> Alright, we got 500 on Three Legged Cat and 1,600 on Ross Pyridol. Okay. Any other gamblers in chat? First blood still to uh, the side of our red team. And we're waiting for force to come through. Oh, chat. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about tomorrow's dinner already. I'm so excited. Tonight I have uh, leftover curry because I start I made curry last night, but tomorrow, uh, because it's fun and it's a good excuse. Nice heal from Malfury, and Johanna's gonna find BRB Soaking, but won't be able to get the kill. Wow, BRB Soaking playing close to death there. 
Uh, but tomorrow I'm gonna make uh, spicy wings and I have mac and cheese as well. I'm so excited about it. Spicy wings in the slow cooker and then mac and cheese in the oven. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Kerrigan looking to just pull in the minion wave closer to the fort front gate here. Clear that out with the safety and the assistance of the towers. Objective turn-in is getting close for both sides. Sounds tasty. I can't wait. I need to remember to take photos for you all. I've been pretty bad about taking food photos because usually I remember to take the photo when I'm done eating and the bowl, is, the bowl or the plate is empty. <laughs> That happened last night. I was like, oh, I should take a photo of my curry. And then I was like, oh, it's, it's, I just finished eating it. <laughs> All right. So just a uh, wave clear right now from both sides. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Turn availability does exist to both teams. We have 47 out of 50 already turned in for Ross Pierre Dahl. BRB Soaking is able to hand a freedom and get that movement speed to get away faster. Uh, who's got the last bit of the turn in? Johanna, Lucio, or Sylvanas on the opposing side. Let's see, 22 plus 19 is not enough, so you need a couple different turn ins there. Johanna trying to turn in. Anubrax in the bush. It looks like the red team will still get the turn in. Red team turn in still. And we'll have to see how Three-Legged Cat defends. It is a full W build of Nubarak. Uh, Harden Carapace. Sorry, I was trying to remember the name of the basic ability and just eluded me. So bottom lane has Black Arrows activated by Sylvanas. The Minion Wave and Web Weaver have crashed in. Kerrigan looking for a Primal Grasp and Impale by the fort front gate. It doesn't seem like it connected onto anyone. Anubarak able to burrow charge away to safety. Kerrigan trying to ravage in. Takes down these side walls. Anubarak throwing out a impale here and there. Donna stepping in a little bit further. Takes a root. Pops the in, the iron skin. Jane is cleared out top. Urel's managed mid. Bottom lane still is fairly healthy. Leork's rotated down. That's why they have pill cameras, so you can so you can still get the picture. Um, I I really don't want to do the retrieval of a pill cam. Oh, Johanna finishes her subdue. Kerrigan will be taken down. Malfurion traded. Lucio gets picked off as well, and this is going to be three-legged cat finding themselves a triple. Wait a second. Hold the phone. Team kill. Nicely done. They destroy the gem economy of Russ Pierre Dahl. Find the pentakill, get the turn in, and we'll have siege giants as well for bottom lane. Nicely done. Is this back to back turn in territory? 36 48. Uh, yeah, they should. Yeah, they'll be the. They'll have enough by the time. No, unless they die, but. From clearing the waves, pushing up with the objective phase, this should be back-to-back -back turn in territory for the side of Three-Legged Cat. First Web Weaver phase should get some initial siege, push up the waves. Second turn in should get some significant siege and value. Should. We'll actually see how that all works out. Bottom lane cleared out quite quickly. Hanzo tries to poke in here and there. Only 15 stacks on the simple geometry. Jaina, 3,756 of the 12K on, on her... Uh, Frostbite baseline to get the activatable ice block. Webweaver in top opens things up a little bit. My apologies. Kerrigan does go down. Leork drops the Entomb. It doesn't look like it's working out too well. Lucio comes in for the high five. There's a wailing arrow from Sylvanas. Cocoon onto Lucio. He should make it out alive unless there's like crazy CC available. The crazy CC was available. Johanna's gonna be rooted, but will she be booted? No. 
Avenging Rev over the wall. BRB soaking is like, maybe I don't want to be here. Ardent Defender is off cooldown. And Leoric will be able to back off safely here. But bottom lane fork front gate's going to go down. And Ubrek still has beetles to summon. And there's a decent minion wave. They're going to get some of this fort, but I don't know if they'll actually take it down completely. Hanzo finishes out simple geometry right now. The turn-in begins again. We already have 37 turn-in by Urel, and only another amount needs to be turned in. <laughs> Nubrak able to burrow charge away. No kill into him. Urel still soaking up the top lane. Jaina splits off. No, she's not going to grab that camp. Okay, just playing it safe. Taking the long rotation. BRB soaking and dark in the turn in. That should be enough. Yeah, that is. And no delay. All right. Back to back web weavers. Bottom lane is pushed back a little bit near the fort. Hanzo arrow is going to go wide. Leoric is going to try and break this Lucio out of the cocoon, but Hanzo's got the immediate scatter. Hold the phone, though. Malfurion is going to be bursted down. We have high rates trying to take out the, the Leoric. Doesn't get the scatter he's looking for, but it manages to assist in some other kills. Is it another team wipe? Team kill. Another team wipe, and this should be some significant siege value between top, mid, and bottom. Rel pushing up the wave, trying to get the web weaver closer to the fort faster. I expect this to be three forts to fall. Mid's gone down. Wave continues to be shoved in. The Web Weaver is still very healthy. And Ubrak, as I mentioned, summons those beetles, so. He'll be able to amplify the siege a little bit. And there's the triple fort phase from the Web Weaver. Back to back turn in, but off of a pentakill once again. Nicely done from Three Legged Cat. They've got a commanding lead in map number two. And they want to get to that upper bracket final up against uh, the other team. I won't spoil it in case people are trying to stay a little in the dark. Uh, as a reminder, these videos will go up on YouTube starting tomorrow with spo spoiler-free additional time added. Be sure to, if you're watching here on Twitch, be sure to follow the stream. If you're watching over on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow this uh, YouTube channel a little bit more. If we hit a thousand subs on YouTube, we can monetize the channel, and that's a little more money for Bandit. It's a little more change for Bandit. Camp going to be invaded here. Lucio Boombox does get the vision. Dark comes in. Okay, hold on. That's going to be an Avenging Wrath over the wall. I wasn't expecting the URL right there. We get the camp stolen away. A very low Sylvanas tries to get out of here, but the Goomba Stomp from URL is going to connect. So URL gets the double kill. Hanzo finds the Kerrigan. Leork to fall. Another Goomba Stomp. Another team kill. Pentakill achieved once again. Wings zeros. Thank you for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the content, bud. And bottom lane keep goes down. 10 seconds on average for the enemy death timers. There should be enough siege damage to win this game. Uh, if this ends right here right now, I think this is the fastest map. I believe this will be the fastest map of uh, Banshee Cup if it ends right now. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Looks like the 26% of the core will be taken off, and there's a back off. I do want to point out, though, there is enough for another turn-in. So this could be disengaged turn-in. Urel in top lane does have 21 gems, but she actually she goes up there for a little more soak. There's about a two-level uh, lead, or two-level gap between the two teams. Okay. Hanzo slightly delaying so he can... Yorel didn't delay! Yorel didn't delay! Oh, Jaina was going to try and go get the camp from mid lane. She was going to tag that. That's why Hanzo stopped turning in for a second, but BRB Soaking missed the message. It's not that big of a deal. Bottom lane seems like the, the, the game plan to just try and end here. Let the Web Weaver descend into the wave very far, or into the lane very far. Actually, the Webweaver is going to descend pretty far into uh, mid lane as well. Dark playing to that low side of the wall. A 
Avenging Rapid, instant mount with the Divine Steed. Hanzo arrow connects onto two. High fives from Lucio. Cleanse all that out. Entomb from Liork. There was a Wailing Arrow from Sylvanas as well. Liork a little bit low. Sylvanas now trying to get away from the enemies and looks like she was zoned out. Urel with a Righteous Hammer. The mid lane keep is dropping rapidly. No activation onto the Haunting Wave, but it looks like Sylvanas clears out the Water Elemental. Meanwhile, Kerrigan is able to get the Cocoon in time, but how much HP did she have inside? Not enough. Speaking of Cocoons, we had a Cocoon onto the Johanna. That'll expire. Chrysalis is the right talent if you want to get particular about the names for Kerrigan. But it looks like with the Web Weavers pushing in the waves, the mid lane keep has fallen, and the core shielding is gone once again. This will be a combo onto quite the Leoric, but he should be able to Wraith walk out in time. BRB soaking, looking for an extra kill, but it is going to be 13 minutes and 20 seconds. Map number two of this best of three goes to three-legged cat. They take the series 2-0.